here's how to stay out of the guidance office for mediation, for fights, uh, for having your parents come up because they think hey, you're watching Journey with Jordana, helping you take the next step in your journey towards your future. Here is how to handle high school socially. Number one, first day, just look yourself in the mirror, remind yourself constantly over and over and over again. Everybody is nervous. As nervous as you are, that's how everybody else feels. It's just that people have different ways of playing it off. So some people just act like, whatever, I'm just here, you know, I don't care. Um, some people act harder than usual, like, but everybody is just as nervous as you are. Just tell yourself that. Like, when you see them, no matter what front you're putting on the outside, remind yourself they're faking it because they're just as nervous as you are. Number two, I've heard this a million times, I'm sharing it with you. The best way to have friends is to be a friend. So instead of being so busy thinking about, oh my goodness, I'm so nervous, and what if I do this, and what if I embarrass myself, oh my goodness, did she look at me weird? Did she see me when I said hi? Oh my gosh, I just waved to myself. Instead of having like all these thoughts going through your head as you're walking through the walls, instead, focus on other people. Like, look for the person who looks like they're lonely. Look for the person who just dropped their stuff in the middle of the hallway and is just horrified. Go over to that person and help them out. Help the people around you out. And as you're helping them out, that's you being a good friend. And what are they gonna give back to you? But friendship. So you'll find yourself making friends. You'll see people like, oh, you know, she's really nice or he's really cool. Like people will just start respecting you and be nice to you because they see that instead of just focusing on yourself and not even seeing other people because you're so worried about everybody staring at you, if you instead start looking at other people to help them, you'll find that people just be drawn to you. And your nervousness is gonna go away a little bit because you'll be too busy helping other people than focusing on your own nervousness, which forces your nervousness to grow. Tip number four, stay out of drama. Now, here's the crazy thing though, because sometimes you're trying your hardest to stay out of drama, but drama finds you. It's insane. Like, some people are just straight looking. Like, you're standing there and they're like, what are you looking at? wasn't even looking at anything like but they're just ready for you so it requires like all right this is gonna sound crazy but you gotta get in your mirror and you gotta practice like a neutral face like the kind of face that looks like don't mess with me but at the same time isn't challenging like come on who wants to fight come get it like you need to have just a face that looks like a deterrent to people so like they don't want to bother you but at the same time you're not challenging them so it's just like this neutralish face. I don't know if I have it on right now, <laughs> but you want to work on that. Cause you know what, if you smile too much, you just seem weak, then they want to bother you because you just seem really young. And if you seem too hard, then people who are trying to find their spot as the hardest want to challenge you. So you gotta find that spot. That's part A of stay out of the drama. Part B is, be careful about people who come up to you and they just want to start talking about people. Because some people come up to you and they start talking about people and all they want is to hear what you're going to say back. And whatever you say back, they're taking back to that person. Because they just thought it was funny to just come up and say stuff so that they can stir up drama. So be very careful about what you say back. If a person is too flamboyant with the way that they're talking, like that person over there and they're very obvious about it, you might just want to be like, hold on one second, excuse me, I just, I just got to go just slide your way out of that situation because if you keep standing there that is inviting drama because that person who is sitting there watching that other person keep pointing they'll be like and you you were standing there too and they're gonna come at you too oh so slide away part c of avoiding trauma is be careful not only what you say, but what you write. Because people will screenshot your stuff, they will pass it on to another person, they consider it proof right there. Just don't say anything or write anything that you wouldn't want someone to say or write about you. Because you never know what someone's gonna do with it. And you're meeting all of these people. Oh, hold on, you know what? We should call this whole section, trust no one, trust no one. Like everybody has to earn your trust because that is how trust works. People are supposed to earn your trust. Over a period of time, you get to know them, you see how they are, and then you're like, all right, you're cool. I'm, I'm safe with you. So yeah, trust no one. That's, that's, that's the overarching, <laughs> the overarching tip of all of these is trust no man. All right, my next tip. 
Be suspicious if all of a sudden a senior guy is interested in you or a senior girl is interested in you and they're coming up to you or their friends are coming up to you telling you that they're interested in you. Like, be very suspicious because most times there's something else going on. Like somebody's playing games, like they thought it was funny to like hurt up the freshmen or to make them look stupid. Somebody's doing some sort of prank. Um, even if they're genuine, still be very careful because girls can be very territorial. And I say that as a girl myself, but like, just picture it. You're like, you're in 12th grade, there's been a guy there that all the 12th grade girls want, and then all of a sudden this ninth grade girl comes in and he's interested in her. It's like, what's, like, what, what, what's going on? Like, <laughs> like <laughs> that's just the way it is. So. You don't want to immediately, it's petty as I don't know what. You don't want to immediately go have a whole bunch of girl enemies because they feel like you're stepping onto their turf. Now, they may not have had a shot with him in a million years, but as far as they were concerned, they had a chance. So you want to take that stuff kind of slow. You want to make sure that you can see what people's real intentions are and what they're doing. Don't just go laying out your heart. It even, even in college, like I know I, I say all the time, I'm like guys, don't worry, don't worry. College guys, college girls are way better. But even in college, like people are taking bets to see how many people they can get with, like or upperclassmen, how many they can get with younger classmen. And that's pretty messed up. And you don't want to appear on that list um, just because somebody thought it was funny. Like your heart is nothing to be played with. So take it. Next tip. Don't feel the need to outdo anyone. Don't out drink them, don't out smoke them, don't try to be sexier than all the other girls. Like, that's just a battle that you, it's like, you know what it's like? It's like playing chicken. Like, you're just coming out, I'm sexier, I'm drinking more, I'm smoking more, and then somebody's going to get hurt at some point in time. So if somebody else wants to play those games, let them, but don't, don't let it be you because it's not worth it, it's not worth it. The damage that it can do to you is not worth it. And especially when people are like sending nudes and they're sending pictures back and forth and they're texting and this girl sent that and if you want to shop with that guy then you have to be hotter than her. It's, it's not worth it. Not worth it. Next tip. First impressions are lasting impressions. This is going to sound so stupid but I remember um, I got put into one homeroom um, the first day of high school and then like a week later they wanted to switch me out and I had to like show up and that day was like gym or something like that and it's like I'm wearing like these sweatpants because my school didn't have uniforms. So I'm like wearing sweatpants and like I look like a bum. And I remember I was like great. So my first day going in, I have to come in like this. So I have to go into the class. I'm like whatever, you know, I just go in. And like I'm telling you, four years later, they were like, yes, I remember you on the first day you were wearing a green sweatsuit. <laughs> like. Wow, like you remember that? Fortunately, it wasn't one of those things where like they were forever gonna like call me names or like give me a nickname based on my sweatpants, but just know the first impressions are last impressions. And I don't say that to put pressure on you for your first outfit and what you're gonna wear, but find the middle ground. However you start, that's how people tend to remember you and it's really hard to undo that. Which brings me to my next one. Don't get stuck in a role. People are always looking for a way to label people. It just seems to make it easier for them to categorize people, even though it's incredibly wrong. They just like to be able to label people. So don't allow yourself to get stuck in a role where people are constantly labeling you. So like, oh, you're, you're the loud one, or you're the one who's always fighting, or you're the one who never does their work. All those kinds of labels, they become prisons. Don't keep doing the same thing all the time, except if it's something good or something that you're like, no, this is, this is what I want. Like, take a label if that's what you want. So for example, if you are always doing your work and they wanna be like, oh, look at, it's the smart one. Yeah, thanks. You could call that however you want. Like, I'm gonna be valedictorian. And you don't even need to announce that. If you wanna be valedictorian, just work on the low. You don't even need to let them know. And you'll be valedictorian. Because if you, again, if you tell them, you're inviting competition. But anyway, there's some labels that people will give you and you just gotta own it. Like, yeah, yeah, I am the smart one. Or they wanna be like, oh, it's church boy. Okay, just let it rock. Let it rock. 
because there's certain labels that they're saying it and they're testing you by constantly saying it and they try to say it in negative ways and they try to embarrass you and they try to make jokes, but eventually they're gonna respect you for it. You're gonna be the person that they come to for help. So as people are picking their labels for people, decide which ones you're okay with and that you can stand in and own versus the ones where you don't wanna necessarily be known that way because it's negative or you want the space to be able to grow. So just make your own choice about your labels. Next one, you as a person, you're constantly changing and growing. So keep your friends close. You're gonna find as you get involved in other activities, you're gonna be introduced to other people and you're gonna meet new friends. But it's like the Girl Scout song, make new friends and keep the old. Allow your friendship group to expand. Don't dump people just because you're moving up the ladder socially or because you found a new group of friends. Because if they were really good friends, then keep your good friends. That's a that's a treasure. Keep them and just keep adding to your group. Don't just go dumping people for dumb reasons. Next one, get involved. Get involved with as many activities as you can because not only does getting involved in activities make school more fun, but you also learn more about yourself and who you are and what your interests are, which will help you to make decisions about your future, like what kind of college you want to go to and what you want out of life as a result of that. So get involved in everything. Like even things that you're like, I don't know if I'd be interested in that. Uh, well, just try it out and see. You never know. You know, everyone talks about bullying and they talk about students. Sometimes students bully teachers. They have jokes on the teacher. Whatever you do, no matter how funny it is, do not laugh or do not let them see you laugh because at the end of the day, that is the person who gives you the grade. And that applies to all staff. So just be careful with that one. Not only should you not bully other students, if you can do everything you can to be an ally to anyone who is being bullied, meaning that you like stand with them, which can be hard. I know it can be hard. Like I'll, I'll never forget. There was this one guy who used to always make jokes all the time on everyone but his jokes were so mean. Like it wasn't just like playful jokes, like they were straight up mean jokes. And I used to get so mad, you know, cause you'd see the hurt in other people's faces and they're like trying to hide it and trying to act hard. And I'd be like, one time I was just like, you have something to say about everyone. Why don't you just be quiet? And he's like, what? And he went in on me. Oh, he went in on me. You know, people who do that, like they're good. Like you can find whatever would make you feel most insecure or whatever stands out most about you, they will jump on that. And so he did, and he went in. Every day he tried to like just come at me because I was trying to defend somebody else. And you know, at first I felt like, oh god, I'm like paralyzed. I feel like everybody else. And then I was like, um, no, it's not going down like that. It's not going down like that. So I had to flip that real quick back on him. Like he got to flip it. I was like, you know, like I would announce his presence when he comes. Oh look, it's the guy who always have jokes, has jokes on everyone. And here's the thing. Everybody, even though they're laughing at his jokes, some people are kind of laughing because they're kind of afraid. Like, they don't want him to flip it on them. And I think that by standing up against him, everybody who was afraid was more like siding with me because they knew that what he was doing was like wrong and it was annoying. So I just found that I, I found allies that way too. So like, I just had to come back at him and they came with me and he stopped eventually. So, I mean, know that being an ally, that there'll be consequences, but if you're strong enough to take it, it's, it's the right thing to do because not everybody's strong enough to take it and you could be saving someone's life by just standing with them. And my second to last, we're almost done. No matter how bad things seem, whether it be academically, whether it be socially, no matter what happens. In high school, because you spend like eight hours of the day there, you go home, there you see people on social media, it can seem like your entire world. And so if something goes wrong, it can feel like the end of the world. No matter how bad it gets, please remember, it is not the end of the world. It is not the end of the world. It will get better. Do not allow yourself to, to get into that dark space where you just feel completely overwhelmed and depressed and you feel like giving up on life and you just discount yourself and you discredit yourself and you actually start to believe negative things about yourself as a result of negative situations because that is not the truth. It's a temporary situation and it will get better. Last piece of advice to help with that, have a support group whether it's like one person or an outside club or an outside team or something, some group of people that you hang out with outside of school so that if things start to go negative in school, even if it's like just for a day, you just know who you are. You have people who remind you other parts of yourself, people who support you, people who listen to you so that when you're tempted to think it's the end of the world, you'll know it's not because you have that little glimmer that reminds you that there is a larger world out there. So there you have it, 20, 20 tips to not only surviving, but thriving in high school. 
Did I leave anything out? If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. If you like this video and you want to see more stuff like this, give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Join the journey. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.